up you guys in today's video I'm going to be talking about the Mixolydian mode. Mixolydian mode is the fifth mode of the major scale but before I get on with the actual lesson I want to talk about my Patreon account. You can go over there find the backing track that you just heard at the beginning of the video and you can actually jam out to the backing track while you're practicing the modes. Not only that but you can also find the different skill diagrams not only for this video but for most of my videos out there. Now coming back to the lesson Mixolydian has an intervallic construction of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and flat 7. Why is this important? Because this is going to be essential to finding out the different chords over which we can play this actual mode. Now this mode has been made famous by all sorts of people. It, you can hear it in different blues guys playing. You can hear different arpeggios based off of this mode um, from Eric Johnson and Joe Bonamassa. You can also hear a little bit of, of this mode in Steve Weiss and Joe Satriani's playing and also in Frank Zappa's playing. So how exactly do we find out which chords we can actually play this mode over? Well, you're just going to take the scale formula and you start stacking it up in thirds. At the beginning, you'll find out that you have a major triad. So you can play this scale over any type of major triad or major chord. It's going to depend on the situation, obviously, but if you're just playing one stagnant major chord then you can totally play mixolydian over it. If you stack another th third above that you're gonna add a flat seven so already we have a dominant chord. Keep stacking up you get a dominant ninth chord then a dominant eleventh and a dominant thirteenth. Now the dominant eleven is not too common because it has an avoid note and it's gonna clash a little bit with that third that fourth or eleven is gonna clash a little bit with that third. And This is important when talking about chords or even when thinking about improvising because again it's a note that's gonna sound a little bit harsh so if you really want to play that 11th I suggest playing a sus4 type of chord instead of a dominant 11th type of chord Now, there's three different ways where I like to think about the modes. The first one is as the intervallic instruction that I just gave you guys. So instead of just playing a, a specific diagram, I'm, and I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit later, but instead of playing that, you're just going to be thinking about the different intervals on your neck. Eventually, this is going to be a lot easier because you don't have to learn a ton of modes or a ton of, of scales or different scale diagrams is what I mean but you just learn the formula and all you really have to do is think about those different intervals all across the neck. So that's the first way. If you the next approach is by looking at the relative major or relative parent scale. In this case, this is a mode of the major scale. So all we want to do is find which major scale this mode belongs to. So in the case of this song, or, the, or the, at the beginning of the video, I'm doing A mixolydian. So from there, we want to go up a fourth, and that's going to be the trick. All you got to do is go up a fourth from the tonality or from the chord that you want to play mixolydian at, and just play the major scale from there. So again, we're in A, so just go up a fourth from A, and you're going to get the D major scale. So you can just play the notes from D major over an A7 type chord and that's going to give you the notes of mixolydian. If you compare the notes to that of the formula you're going to find out that's the same exact notes. Now finally and probably the least favorite way or at least my least favorite way of looking at the modes is by learning different scale diagrams. This is probably my least favorite because because most guys just turn to learn the pattern and they forget about all the theory behind it and if you don't learn the formula you're not going to learn how to apply it. So I don't really have anything against the patterns. They're really good for different muscle memory type of movements. It's really good for fast lines because it's very symmetrical. But I really recommend that you learn all the theory behind it before you go into learning the different patterns. Or at least 
learn the theme behind it as you're learning the different patterns. All right, so that's it for this video. Remember, you can find the backing track and the different scale diagrams over at my Patreon account if you've subscribed to the interactive YouTube experience tier. I want to thank my Patreons, Jose Morales, Raul Tise, and James Swartz for helping make this video throughout the support. You can also find me on all sorts of social media. I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. If you're interested in private lessons, you can go over to my website, juanantoniomusic.com, and you can find all sorts of different lesson packages. Also, at my site, you can find my book, The Art of Scale Weaving, and my two different box sets with the guys from Guitar Tutorials. All right, thanks for watching.